Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Yoko Harada. Uh, today I'm talking about the origins to JVM languages. Uh, sorry, I'm not so good at English. I'm gonna try to speak English and uh, I will speak slowly so that you can understand my English. But <laughs> uh, maybe my presentation will uh, finish early, so uh, if you have a question, please come to me. That's a good to good, good to answer your question. Uh, anyway, uh, my presentation slide is here. Uh, so the garden point dash point that at thought that comes as slideshow. Uh, this is a JLB on Rails application. My presentation itself is on JLB on Rails. Uh, there will be on Rails on Google App Engine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. like this orange shows up. Okay. <laughs> Let me introduce myself briefly. Uh, currently, I'm a Javier of JOE project. I mainly contribute to embedding API. I'll talk about this API today. And also, I'm a career of another JOE project. Uh, I work for pure Java implementation of Nakogiri. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I write uh, I write Java code every day, not Ruby, but everything is for Ruby. And my uh, blog is here, uh, Yoplet. Uh, it's not so clear, but uh, Yoplet. Sorry, <laughs> that blogspot.com. Uh, my Twitter ID is Yoplet. Okay. Uh, First, I'm going to speak about the idea, what is provisions to JVM languages? I believe all of you know JV has a nice Java educational feature. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, and maybe you have used Java API from Ruby. But uh, an opposite, how about opposite? Ruby from Java. Maybe only some of you have used Ruby code from Java. Okay. Maybe. Uh, but Ruby from Java is also JLB's nice Java integration feature. You can use Ruby from Java. So uh, let's think about it. This <coughs> Java, this Java. Uh, maybe I can replace to this Java to JVM languages. And one more, uh, maybe I can replace this Ruby by RubyGems, and if I write specific language name, it could be a uh, RubyGems from Clojure, Groovy, JSON, Scala. <coughs> uh, it look, it might look complicated, uh, like this rocket science. Uh, <laughs> I. I took this picture at the uh, Kennedy Space Center, so it is actually rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this integration is not like such a rocket science. <coughs> it's rather easy because, uh, uh, like JLogi, uh, JVM languages has Java integration feature. It means you can use Java API from Clojure. Java API from Groovy, Java API from Jiton, Scala. So, Jerry is a Java application. Of course, Jerry has a bunch of Java API. So, if I can replace Java API by Jerry API, so it might be a Jerry API from Clojure, Jerry API from Scala, Jiton, Groovy. Right, so yes, <laughs> JV has Java API for that. It is embedding API. The name of the API is Redbridge. 
Uh, I'm gonna talk about red bridge later, so let's look at this idea here. This is the idea, and Jeruby speaks uh, Jeruby speaks Java with JVM languages using red bridge API, and Jeruby runs regions as usual. So we can use uh, uh, revision from JVM languages. Uh, we can integrate both JV languages and J revisions. So let's look at how JV languages can integrate, uh, can use Ruby API. This is a closure code. Uh, universally <coughs> unique identifier generator gen to closure. Yes, closure can do this. Uh, this line is import. Closure can import JRuby API or JRuby.embed scripting container. This scripting container is a red bridge. And next line is uh, instantiation. This is a closure way of instantiation. Uh, this closure uh, instantiates red bridge. Then this one script red method is a scripting container method and it evaluates Ruby code. So this part is Ruby. Closure evaluates two requires. Then closure evaluates this timestamp create method and print. Uh, next example is uh, Groovy. UUID gen to Groovy. Of course, Groovy can do this. Groovy can import scripting container and instantiate scripting container and evaluate to requires to uh, import to require and to, to regions and uh, then evaluate this timestamp create method and print. Next one, JSON. A JSON import scripting container, instantiate, evaluate to requires, evaluate timestamp method, and print. Next one, Scala. Of course, Scala can do this. Import scripting container, Instantiate scripting container and evaluate to requires and uh, evaluate timestamp with and print element. Next is JRuby. Of course, JRuby can do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Ruby gems over J Java API from Ruby code. It is, of course, funny and people don't do this. But this code, ad code actually works. If you have time, try this. Uh, if I have a time, I'm gonna show you this demonstration later. Uh, next is Redbridge, uh, Redbridge Embedding API. Redbridge, what kind of bridge is it? Redbridge is not Golden Gate Bridge like huge stuff. Red bridge is this kind of small, lovely bridge. It is a small Java API, and red bridge is just a nickname of all JV that and the that the aspect packages. Okay, red bridge is a part of JRuby. If you have JRuby, you have red bridge. You don't have any extra Java archive or any gems for that. And in addition, uh, JRuby uh, Red Bridge's test cases are included in JRuby, so Red Bridge is tested as a part of JRuby. So internal changes of JRuby API are absorbed by the Red Bridge. So you can use Red Bridge uh, without any worry. Next, uh, Redbridge is a Java-friendly API. 
Uh, some of you might know JSR223. It is a scripting API. It is uh, included in JDK6 and the uh, standard API. But uh, it is uh, JSR223 is uh, common to all JVM languages and a bit short to use JRuby. So JRuby can do this, do that. But JSR223 often don't have, doesn't have such a method. But JRuby is designed for JRuby, which which leverages JRuby's ability more and more. Next, uh, red which is a clean API. Red which cleanly starts up JRuby runtime cleanly run Ruby code, cleanly shut it down. Yeah, so uh, some of you might have used JRuby's internal API, but internal API might be changing without saying, saying anything. If you use internal API, you are responsible to that changes. But uh, Redbridge is it, as I talked before, uh, Redbridge absorbs such an internal change. Uh, for example, JRuby's main method is not for users. So if you have used internal API, please use Redbridge. <coughs> OK, uh, Redbridge is simple. This is a great advantage of Redbridge. Basically, there are just two things to do. First, install shift scripting container. Second, evaluate Ruby code. Uh, sorry, this is a Java code. <laughs> uh, since Redbit is a Java API, this is the basic form of usage. And Redbit is a colorful API. Redbridge has three types of context models, singleton, single thread, thread thread. Redbridge has a bunch of confirmation methods. I'm going to show you some of them later. Um, Redbridge has four types of evaluation sources, uh, input string, reader, string, and path type. Redbridge has four types of sharing variable models, Transient, persistent, local, global, BSF, on and on and on. So here's the uh, Redwood resources. <coughs> uh, so can I connect to Ruby? Uh, if you have internet connection, please visit this website. So uh, Wiki is a very good source to learn how to use Redbridge. API docs, uh, I'm going to show you this one. This is, this is on my PC. Sorry about Japanese Java API. Redbridge is here, and script container is here. So scripting container has this kind of bunch of API. And uh, I write about Redfish to my blog. Uh, other resources are here, a uh, community page of jerry.org. Okay, then I'm gonna show you four examples and talk about Redfish API more. First one is data mapper to closure. This is a simple example. Basically, this closure does two things. Instance a scripting container and evaluate, 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 evaluate. Something new is this path type. Path type is specified how to load Ruby code. Let's see this API. So path type is here. And this is a Java's M type. And it has 
absolute and classless and real clean. I used class class here, so uh, let's see. Can you see? Maybe. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have closure example here. The first one is uh, this is a data mapper's model definition. I evaluated this one and uh, uh, this is a closure way of creating new models. And the uh, whole stuff is here. Uh, it is the uh, same as this code. Okay, then I can run closure. It must be here. Uh, it takes a couple of seconds, so we see why it goes. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this model is showed up. Showed up here. So, uh, Closure could use a uh, uh, data mapper gen. Okay, so. um, next one, maybe I can't show you this demo since internet connection is off. So. <laughs> Uh, this is a Twitter gen to Scala. Uh, I use Twitter, Twitter gen from Scala here. Uh, this this Scala code is also a simple one. Uh, just uh, instantiate the scripting container and evaluate, evaluate. In this example, I set gen pairs here. Let's see directory here. I have all Twitter gems here. So I specify this gem pairs like this. And uh, this uh, this is uh, Scala's motor line string. I just evaluate this code. Maybe this one. <laughs> Won't work. Sorry. It's not your fault, it's their fault. <laughs> 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 okay. And next example is cucumber from Jiphone. Uh, this is a bit complicated. Uh, in this example, I used two, uh, two uh, configuration methods. One is set argument value, but another one is set error. Uh, so if we use, when we use cucumber, we type cucumber space feature file name. This feature file name is an uh, argument value, so I picked up that feature value at here. This is a Python way of taking out argument value. This is a Python object. So I set this Python object to scripting container. 
uh, in Ruby, argument value should be a list of string. This is a, a equivalent to that one. And next one, uh, I set Java string writer to set error. This one is Java's object. Uh, this is because I want to ca capture uh, standard error into this string writer, and I want to control that. At this line, I use abs type absolute. This is absolute test to cucumber command. And I evaluate this cucumber. But this cucumber raise exception, so I capture here and add this comment. <coughs> Okay, let's see this demo. So Jason, Webpage, Features. Oh, let's see. Before that, I'm going to show you the directory here. I have a feature here, and uh, uh, here is a uh, Python code I showed you. Okay, cucumber words. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I could successfully uh, start cucumber from Python, but we got a lot of pending and um, exception method, exception message. This exception message is I wanted to capture. And uh, this pending message is uh, because Cucumber doesn't support Python on, oh, so. Oops. Sorry, Cucumber doesn't support Python on JLB. But opposite to uh, we can poke around JSON's Java API from JRuby. For example, this is the Ruby code to run Python. Python, uh, JSON has web page like API. This is uh, similar to scripting container and uh, JSON container can exit Python code on JRuby. So, like, uh, if I if we do this kind of thing, Cucumber uh, JSON, uh, sorry, Python support on JRuby might be possible using JSON and JRuby. Okay. So this is a last example. Rails to Groovy. Maybe this is a fancy example. Uh, this uh, Groovy has nice subred wrapper. So this example is not so uh, complicated, not so difficult, rather easy one. But uh, I, a whole code doesn't fit into one page of my slide, so I divided two parts. This is an initializer. Groovy instantiate raise and the next one is uh, dispatcher this uh, fire up this controller. So let's see this initializer. Uh, in this example, I use sharing variable feature of Redbridge. This put 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 is uh, for sharing variable. Let's see directory three here. So, uh, 
this is uh, Java's, Java's uh, web application structure. It has web in directory and read directory. Under directory, I have read application. This blog is a web application. I have dispatcher and initializer here. One controller is here and uh, here's uh, in the HTML. You are familiar, I think you are familiar with this. So, uh, I first I said load test. This is a test to load Waves application. And next one is gen test. To get started, we need two things to gen home and uh, pass to gen file. If I set this in to environment variables and set pass to load, we can we can start up Rails by this county environment. So let's let's start this one. Uh, I have Tomcat here, and this hemlock is the directory to link to the directory I showed here. Let's start Tomcat first. Okay, so Tankyat has started. Okay, and then uh, web application is started. And uh, in okay. with Initializer race is up and running. <coughs> then uh, I will invoke this home controller. I'm using Web3, so Web3 has, Web3 really embraces Rack application. Every controller has Rack interface, this call method. So I, I invoke this call method with environment variable. This environment variable is minimum to start index method. And this call environment method returns Rack response you know rack response so first first value of uh, array first element of array is a response code and uh, second element of rack response is a header a response header and uh, third element is a body part so uh, i take you know, this body part and uh, using body method this is a uh, actual uh, HTML response. So I write response right here. Okay, then. Let's see, it is really fast, so it might be cached. Okay, it actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, it showed up. And I let's edit a little bit.
and refresh its appearance. So, please welcome the <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is that all? So, do I have time? Oh, okay. What kinds of variables can you pass in and retrieve out of the, the Red Bridge API? So, what, what kinds of objects, types? Uh, any object. Yeah. So, Jeremy proxies Java object to Ruby. Jeremy has that ability. In internally, Jeremy proxies and wraps every object uh, into Ruby object, so you can pass any Java object. Yeah. Okay. Um, may I ask you about Nobugiri? Oh, yes, sure. Thank you. Could you um, have a couple questions? Could you give us like a like a really brief overview of how um, what the parts are, like which parts are written in Java? Um, you know, what external libraries you're using? How does the interplay of Ruby string objects versus Java string objects work? Um, and uh, are there any um, uh, gotchas we should look for? And also, I have a specific error that I'm encountering, and I don't know, I can ask you later. If that's <laughs> okay, so uh, as for Nanka, we, uh, Pure Java, not we really use Ruby code as much as possible. Many, uh, almost all Ruby code is used. And uh, Nokomi uses WebXML. So uh, I write WebXML part in Java using uh, Zarsis and Neko HTML <coughs> and other couple of Java API. And string is, uh, it's often uh, type change to Java string and Ruby string. Yeah, it really frequently often uh, to com conversion. Yeah. It does the conversion often? Yeah. Every time convert to Java and Ruby. Are there any encoding issues involved? Anything we need to look for in terms of encoding? We're having a problem where somewhere it's complaining that some characters are non-value TF8 format characters. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the file, it looks like it's all plain you know, English type. Uh, but um, internally, that happened, but I, I don't think you don't need to worry about this uh, because uh, Pure Java Nobuguri passes almost all Nobuguri's test cases. Yeah, so if you are using, by using uh, so Nobuguri API, you, can, you, you don't need to worry about internal implementation. Yeah. Okay. Question uh, uh, really, but uh, uh, okay. Almost all thing uh, done by JRuby itself. Red Bridge is just a uh, interface to uh, Java and uh, JRuby. So uh, if you, uh, you you talk about Active Record, that uh, JRuby's JRuby's covers. Yeah. So. Uh, it, did that answer your question? I guess, how do I share information from that JRuby scripting container back out of my Java or my... Oh, okay. Uh, sharing variable mechanism uh, that covers that part. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> RedBridge itself has a uh, variable map in, in it. And uh, uh, when it is needed, uh, push that variable into JRuby. Yeah, so uh, Jeremy, uh, so you, you know Ruby, so you Ruby has global variable, instance, local, and constant. And uh, so global variable can control, actually, because it is global, and it should be on uh, Ruby runtime always. 
but uh, local variable is just one time variable and uh, if you need local variable put script container and JV use that then it exported and uh, instance variable is uh, it's uh, uh, lifetime is uh, same as instance variable scope it, yeah such scope is uh, uh, actually same as Ruby's idea so uh, Java uh, Java part save those variable but uh, on a Ruby runtime it is same as Ruby Ruby's uh, idea exactly same as Ruby yeah is it Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Is, if you're bundling a bunch of uh, Ruby gems to uh, be used from Java code, you know, like say 10, 15 gems or something, and those things that they depend on, mm -hmm. is there a standard way of packaging uh, that you are doing? Oh. Like best practice for so that so that um, those gems can be found. Yeah, so packaging is uh, one problem. So uh, recently, I write about the packages, packaging of my blog. So if you interested in, please see that. Uh, in my blog, I use Bangla and uh, install <coughs> some directory, all all gems in some directory, and uh, package them in jar. And uh, to see uh, gems, uh, we need set uh, load test. I show you some, uh, 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 for example, script container has a uh, uh, load set load test, uh, this method. Uh, this, this, using this method, uh, you if you set load test to that gen, each gen, then uh, your application can see gen correctly in a jar, gen in a jar. So you, you know, like that you can package them. And maybe other raw R or some other packaging tool might work, but I haven't used that. <laughs> so I can, oh, check. How about the, the 
performance using the red bridge? Have you used, done any benchmark? <laughs> I don't have uh, actual benchmark, <laughs> but uh, mm, performance is a bit worse than using simple JRuby because it has uh, overlap to Java code to JRuby. But uh, performance is uh, got better than first release. <laughs> yeah. It's all? Thank you. So maybe uh, my, my time is uh, this time. OK. It, it's, I think it's 12, right? Yeah, it's time to lunch. So. <laughs>